It's Saturday in Tryon, North Carolina, Melrose Mountain. Our place is called Higher Ground. And uh, I could make a lot of jokes about that with the rain that's been coming down ever since about midnight last night. But I know that this rain has to make its way to the waterways, rivers, that all go down to Columbia and Charleston. And so it's a sad day uh, because what they don't need is this much rain. And I believe that we've already had more than an inch of rain here. And again, it all has to make its way down to an area that's already been devastated. Lives have been lost. Homes have been lost. Cars have been lost. And uh, it's a tragic thing. So I hope that you'll take a moment after this devotion to pray for those that are downstream from uh, the mountains here in North Carolina and the upstate of South Carolina, which is all getting this heavy rain right behind the flooding that's already occurred. I want to bring a devotion to you today from uh, God's love letter, which is the Gospel of John. If you've never looked at the Gospel of John as God's love letter, then you need to go back through and read how much God loves us because he keeps telling us that over and over again in the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John is written by John. He wrote five books of the New Testament. He was an eyewitness of Jesus' life here on earth, the early beginnings of the church. And he's also an eyewitness of things in heaven and things that are yet to come in the book of Revelation. Now, one of the things that comes out in the Gospel of John is the seven I am's. Now, there's probably more than seven. It depends how you look at the I am's. But Jesus said, I am. And then he would give a word that would define who he was. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door to heaven. I am the good shepherd that keeps the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth. I am the true vine, and without me you can do nothing. It's interesting, isn't it, how many times he said, I am, and used those graphic words to allow us to see his character and his nature and his attributes. There's another thing that's interesting in the Gospel of John, uh, unlike all of the other Gospels, and that is in the King James Version, he says, verily, verily, many times, 25 times to be exact. In the New King James, because most people don't know what verily, verily means, he says, most assuredly. In the New American Standard Version, which is the version that I like the best, he uses the term truly, truly. In other words, listen, listen. What I have to say is very, very important to you. Well, as we look at today's devotion, he starts out by saying, therefore, but in a different way. He says, these things I have spoken to you. And, and he's saying, listen, listen, truly, truly, verily, verily. These things I spoke to you for a purpose. What was the purpose? Well, he says in chapter 16, verse 1, very clearly, the purpose is to keep you from stumbling. I don't want to stumble to you. He said, I've written these things so you'll not stumble. Now, what did he write? Well, remember, whenever the therefore or these things I've written to you are stated, that means we have to go back and look. So let's go back. And as I went back to look, I realized I had to go all the way to chapter 13 and go through chapter 13, 14, and 15, because I believe those are the things he said that will keep us from stumbling. In chapter 13, he used the washing of the disciples' feet at the upper room's Lord's Supper to show the need for humble service. Second of all, I think it's very important that you notice in chapter 13 that he said he's gone to prepare a place for us. Oh, that's so important. A place in heaven for those of us that believe. In chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Philip asks a question and he answers the question. He says, uh, Philip says, show us the Father. 
And Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why is that so important? Well, if we look at Jesus' life, we see his character, his attributes, and the kind of person that he was. We know what the Heavenly Father is like. Then Judas says, why didn't you reveal this to the world? And Jesus said, what I'm about to do will reveal it to the world. In chapter 16, the focal part that we want to look at today, because he said, these things I have spoken, he reminds us that the Holy Spirit will come to convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. And he tells us that the Holy Spirit will come to guide us into the truth. Boy, that's a lot of information, isn't it? Maybe it would be wise for you to read chapter 13 through 16 and see what Jesus said. He definitely said, I love you, and I have a wonderful plan for your life. Just believe in me. I died for your sins so that if you'd repent and turn from those sins, you might have eternal life. And I've gone to prepare a place for you. Now, let me just close this thought for you. If he has created all of the beauty of this world, and I look out my window, and even with the fog and rain, I see the beauty of the leaves beginning to change color. If he's created all of this beauty here on earth, that will be burned up according to the book of Revelation one day. And if he's created the kind of beauty here and now, imagine what he's prepared for us in heaven for an eternity, not for just a short time. That's your thought for the day. Go to church tomorrow, will you? Someplace where they teach the Bible. God bless and have a good day.